but it's all about creating a problem that he starts to panic with. And this is how I do it. Is Ryan Bowen a genius or a joke? He's recently given us the five phases of Bowen, including the warm up, the ready go, finding the lane, creating a problem for RVJ, and finally, making RVJ pin himself. Ryan Bowen has a large bit of meat he's bitten off and now he's gotta chew it. Let's check out these five phases and you tell me in the comments below, is Ryan Bowen a genius or is he a joke? Objective one is to be able to be wrist straight, center table, and then be in a great position to be able to really strongly supinate. I just try to get my elbow down. It's, it's, it's difficult to do that at the moment. This is an easy warm up. Phase one is fairly easy to understand. This is all about the setup. Ryan is really focusing on starting high in order to be able to crash down once the ready go happens. He's engaging back pressure and making sure those knuckles stay up. The next movement is going to represent the ready go. Now, in the ready go for me, the next most critical movement is just going to be to turn on wrist flexion whilst keeping a high knuckle. Have that high knuckle position, and then I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to high cup. Still no side pressure involved. The reason, even though I want to end up low, I want to be crashing down. And when you do crash down, you get more value in your purchase of the rotation. So you want to be as high as you can in order to crash low effectively. Phase two is all about turning on that wrist flexion. You can see here the direct continuation from phase one. This is all about keeping those knuckles high like phase one, but then preparing to crash down into the supination and Brian Bowen's ultimate lane. <laughs> Alrighty, so the next phase that what we're talking about is to go, it's, it's, it's how to force it into my lane. Now, what is my lane? As we know, it's supinated, it's side pressure, it's, it's containing of the pronation. It's a position where I need to be in order to avoid everything that Rob has. Now, we're still in the survive phase. I don't actually, I'm not trying to pin Rob yet. I'm just trying to dictate and get it into the lane that I needed to be in. So this next phase is exactly how I train to do that. We're gonna now tr train the transition from back pressure and in a high cup to a side pressure low cup position. So wrist up, cupped, at the moment back pressure, side pressure, back pressure, side pressure. Phase three is where Bowen hopes that the first two phases have paid off. He'll be transferring from back pressure to side pressure. And let me be clear, this is the money movement. This transitioning from the back high cup to low side cup will be critical. The next phase is the further development of surviving. Someone like Rob is a stronger human than I am. There is no option to simply pin him. Everything up until this point has been getting it to the fight of lactic acid. We're trying to get him onto the defensive half of the table because that's where I'm going to be able to best affect that lactic acid in him and impart the strategy that I'm after. Now I have secured the ability to access my lane. I'm not trying to finish the match here. As I said, I don't anticipate the ability to actually defeat his bicep yet. I'm simply gonna lean on it and start to add up that fatigue. So here's how we train that static hold. Now this is the phase right here where I'm looking at Rob, talking to Rob. He tries to get out through center and I say, no, 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 no. Ah, I can't get out, ah, I can't get out, ah, I can't get out, ah, I can't get out. I still can't pin him. He's still got this enormous bicep that's just a roadblock. Side pressure. What's going on, dude? <laughs> you gonna pin yourself yet or what? He's not ready to pin himself yet. That's the next one. So phase four, this might be where the delusion starts to trickle in. This is all about focusing on the defeat of RVJ's pronator, but that's not all. The main goal here is it's really not to pin RVJ, but rather to build that lactic acid up in RVJ's bicep while defeating him psychologically. <laughs> Ow, ow. 
the pin yourself phase. <laughs> so in this phase, I might choose to pin. I will wait for Rob to pin himself. When I am training this final phase, it's a static hold. He's no longer trying to top roll, okay? So I don't need finger containment anymore. I want to keep my cup in deep, but I also want to drop my body down low like this and actually start to think about actively pinning. If I can't actively pin him, I will just simply wait here, look at him and ask him if he's gonna pin himself, which he will. This is what it looks like. I'll sit here and I'll train sitting right here. He isn't always actively going. He'll actually rest. So when he rests, I'll rest. He rests, I'll rest again. When he rests, I'll rest more. And every time he does, what I'm training right here will be standing in his way. The final phase, interesting stuff here. Bowen says he may or may not choose to pin RVJ. Please let me know what you think about that in the comments. Finger containment, no longer necessary. And the biggest question of all, who will rest harder? Bowen says if RVJ rests, he's just gonna rest even more. Let me know in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen, is Ryan Bowen a genius here? Or is he just a bit of a joke? RVJ versus Ryan Bowen coming up at King of the Table number three. It's gonna be a hell of a ride. Let me tell you this, place your bets now on stakekings.com. Thanks to Ryan Bowen for being a never-ending fountain of content. Maximum effort, everybody.